Traditional financial institutions use a variety of metrics to track assets. Metrics like Bollinger Bands, the EMA, the MACD, the RSI, all serve as indicators for the strength or health of an asset. But none of these metrics can be properly applied to Bitcoin, or synthetics or the graph or avalanche, or basically any and every major coin or token in the top 200 assets by market cap. This video is a breakdown of why these metrics cannot be mapped onto crypto. The specific example we'll be using is Bitcoin and the RSI, but the reasons why it doesn't work applies to all of the different metrics and all of the different tokens. And we're going to talk about the RSI, the Relative Strength Index, because it's the easiest to understand. The RSI is a number from 0 to 100, and it represents if a stock is oversold or overbought. The RSI is used as a metric of stock price health, and it's applied to stocks to see if recent price action is justified based on prior long-term price action. When people sell, a stock's RSI goes down, and when people buy, a stock's RSI goes up. To paraphrase Wikipedia, Traditionally, RSI readings greater than 70 are considered to be overbought and are due for a rebound back to 50. You sell those. And RSI readings lower than 30 are considered oversold and are due for a rebound back to 50. You buy those. In between 30 and 70 is considered neutral, with 50 being the correct number. And for some reason, people decided to apply this metric to Bitcoin, even though it's totally inappropriate. The RSI was developed in 1978 for stocks, and its use is predicated on several very important assumptions, the primary assumption being that the incoming supply of a stock is zero. When companies are created, stocks are issued, and this number doesn't change. Stock splits don't count, you should know that. The RSI can only properly measure the strength of an asset if the incoming supply is zero. But Bitcoin doesn't have an incoming supply of zero. Every block, which is about 10 minutes, 6.25 Bitcoin are minted to the miner who solved the block. This is brand new Bitcoin. And the sale of this Bitcoin doesn't represent a loss in the strength or confidence of Bitcoin. It represents a miner covering their operating costs. Furthermore, the Bitcoin block halving is in 180 days, and the supply of Bitcoin will go from 6.25 per block to 3.125. The RSI doesn't know that. The RSI can't see or know or understand that this sudden drastic reduction of Bitcoin being sold is because of a change in the rate of issuance. The RSI only sees that drastically less Bitcoin is being sold and starts to label Bitcoin as being overbought. And this has major implications for the way that TradFi interacts with Bitcoin. During every single bull market, the RSI for Bitcoin stayed in the overbought range for months. And this is why every single one of those 70-year-old TradFi executives goes on to CNN Money and says, Bitcoin can't possibly stay at this price. Look at all of these technical indicators. But none of those metrics understand or incorporate that Bitcoin has a changing supply. The traditional stock and futures markets rely on the assumption that supply is fixed and that demand is stable. This is why the stock market will keep going up forever. Humans are born, they get jobs, they buy houses, they contribute to their 401k for 45 years, and then they have children who continue this cycle. This creates decades-long cycles in which there are extremely stable, long-term demands. And occasionally, the market panic dumps. You buy those. Crypto is the exact opposite. Crypto has an ever-increasing supply, and the demand is chaotic. Except every few years, the supply gets cut in half, and the demand panic buys. Which creates these insane bull markets with blow-off tops. You sell those. This is why Bitcoin is pretty much in an always-go-down cycle. A steady supply of new Bitcoin is dumped over the course of years, and eventually an equilibrium price is found in like the last 6 or 12 months before the halving. Then the supply gets cut in half, the price absolutely cranks for like a year, and then goes back to this number go down phase for years and years and years, before finding an equilibrium price again and holding that price just long enough to give these traditional financial metrics some sense of usefulness before then going parabolic and totally breaking their entire model. And this logic applies to Bollinger Bands, the EMA, the MACD, you name it. Any financial metric made before 2010 doesn't apply to Bitcoin because it doesn't account for the continuously increasing supply, and that the incoming supply changes every 210,000 blocks, which is about four years. This is why the Bitcoin stock-to-flow model and the rainbow chart are so popular, even though they're kind of mediocre. There's still models which at least attempt to incorporate the changing supply. So now you have this information. 
how do you act on it? Is there any place you could go to create orders in a decentralized, non-custodial, you already know it's Carbon DeFi, create an irreversible MEV protected limit order, and then create another one, and then link them together to create a recurring trading strategy. You don't even pay gas when your orders get filled, so they can just keep going. Don't want to worry about trying to time the top? Then create an irreversible MEV protected range order instead. Then link it to another limit or range order. There's no maker fee, and the UI just got an upgrade so you can more easily see how well your strategy is performing. Then sync it up to HAL XYZ and get notifications by email every time someone uses your strategy to make a trade. And don't forget to subscribe, because even though we just spent this whole episode trash talking TradFi markets for how bad their performance metrics are, there's a lot of that going on in crypto. And so the next episode is going to be about how decentralized exchanges use vanity metrics to make you think they're way more popular than they actually are. See you then.